We no afraid, we no see no one where we afraid of. We no afraid, we no see no one where we afraid of. Yeah, this is Everton Blender. And it's all about the young police from Jamaica. Seeing young police channel. Big up yourself. Everton Blender said that. We no afraid, we no see no one where we afraid of. Blessed love, Rastafari. Yes, welcome to the Jamaica Young Police Channel. To our loyal viewers, subscribers and Patreon members. At the channel, we are a group of law-abiding citizens who believe in the rule of law and respect the rights of every citizen. But not the ones who do not subscribe to such behavior. We do believe in and support preemptive strikes because they save lives. This is a logical conclusion because preemptive strikes save lives and prevent the further loss of lives. We are all about saving lives at this channel. We at the channel aid criminals with a passion and do not want them over here. We do not want your views, your subscriptions, your likes or your comments. Please go elsewhere where the red carpet is waiting for you. Over here, we want you to go to prison or the departure lounge at Madden. Moving on to today's video yeah, so you know when we always start our video we always tell you to always look at your lcd so you're looking at a man um you know having you know an, a gun beside him yes um and other things on the table and that man that um plot up in here or uh, i don't know uh, his name is david brooks i call him Movada. So he's contemplating, um, feeling excited about um, Vibes Cartel out of prison. So he wants to go to Jamaica. But what this man don't know, you know, the day that my father arrives in Jamaica is the day that he will go to jail and then prison and join his son. And I tell you, because these people, you know, they believe that um, the police force have, you know, um, short memory and forgot that this man has um, been a person of interest in regards to um, a murder that happened in the community where he's from. So, but these people, you know, they don't believe in the rule of law, you know. But the day, the day that Jamaican dancehall artist and entertainer, David Mavada Brooks, set foot in Jamaica will mark the beginning of his long overdue reckoning with the law. Upon his return, he will be promptly arrested, face trial in court, and ultimately to be sentenced to prison. There, he will join his son, who is already serving time for murder. Mavada knows the weight of his past actions and is fully aware of the consequences he evaded when he fled the country. His departure may have delayed justice, but it cannot escape him forever. What kind of father encourages his child into a life of crime? And we are telling you now, just like, um, so you have a guy who in a prison named um, Ninja Man. Yeah, man. Him and the son in a prison and him thing there as a cellmate. Me don't know what kind of father of them this. All corals and corabunkers and depraved mind. So, basically, it's the same thing with David Brooks. What kind of father encourages child into a life of crime? A father who lacks the necessary social skills, moral compass, and sense of responsibility. Qualities that Mavada has sorely neglected. His influence on his son led him to the tragic path that ended in criminality and the failure to guide his child towards a better future reflects poorly on him as a parent and a, and a public figure. As a father, as a parent, you want to encourage your child or your children um, to aspire to be the best they can in society but no this man want to feed son to become done and killer and say we're in a prison because you have to understand that criminal relies on the silence of victims witnesses for them to continue their life of crime but what he did not know that that his son that they will be witness that was willing to risk it all and go to court and send his son to prison where he belong and now he's there crying like a baby yeah man so that's the life you want, that's the life you will get, a life of crime. Because once you violate someone's um, human rights, 
there are consequences. So in these garrisons, you know that um, yeah, them believe that there's a lot, there are laws to themselves, and they can do whatever they want. And the biggest enemies to them are the police, because the police are the ones that are there to make these people accountable for their crimes. Yes, you understand. My father's actions go beyond just his personal fallings, his feelings. They represent the dangerous consequences of glorifying criminality, especially in the influential world of dancehall by normalizing, normalizing and romanticizing crime through his music and lifestyle. My father has contributed to a culture that entices young people into life of violence and lawlessness. And yeah, so him, whilst him make money, you know, by encouraging um, youths involving a crime, yeah, so for him son, art meets real life. So him son, that prison. And him now run away, run away from Jamaica, um, you know, when the police was, were closing in on him. And he hasn't been back since. So he's now he's planning because he feel happy. So him, you know, his nemesis, um, Vibes Cartel is out. He's one of the stupidest men they ever see. Um, Vibes Cartel sent men to shoot up him vehicle up by and try to kill him and he is beginning up. I'm telling you, I've never seen anything like this. These are people these are people who have low self-esteem, lack self-love, even have anything we call sense. Common sense. So the Jamaica Constabulary Force is eagerly awaiting his return to the island, ready to bring him to justice. My father's escape from the country may have temporarily shielded him from accountability. But his days of freedom are numbered. When he finally touches Jamaica's, Jamaican soil again, the wheels of justice will swiftly turn, ensuring that he faces the full extent of the law. His imprisonment will only be a moment of personal justice, but a powerful statement to all those who glorify crime. It's time to break the cycle. People must be held accounted for violating other people's human rights. Yeah, we're not big up no bad man. You understand? You know, we big up, we big up the people them will believe in a self-defense. We don't believe in a coward, a man who, oh, 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 why, why you kill people and, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, not a murder. You go to prison for that or your departure lounge. So the history of criminality in Jamaica and dancehall is a troubling reflection of how a genre once rooted in cultural expression has for, for some become a vehicle to normalize behavior that violates the fundamental human rights of others. Shabarangs never promote for violate for kill nobody and them thing, um, for, you know promote for violate people human rights. Everton blend don't do that. I don't hear Bugle do anything like that. Anthony B no do that either. And there are some other uh, you have a raster man named Chuck Fender. I never hear a peal of music the man do. Conscious music. You understand? Man, the man is not involved in a drugs business. And the man is not hype. The man is not believe in disrespecting people either. The man is treat people with love. This trend speaks to deeper societal issues and exposes a grim reality about some of the individuals who perpetrate such violence through their music and lifestyles. Many of these figures entrenched in the glorification of crime exhibit a dangerous mix of illiteracy, arrogance, belligerence, and self hate Lacking the tool for critical thinking and personal development, they often embrace a life of lawlessness, believing it to be a part to power and respect. Call them a dummy. However, this facade of strength on the mask a deeper insecurity. One that fuels their reckless disregard for the well-being of others. If you love yourself and respect yourself, you're going to respect and love another human being. When a man wants people to see him and fear them because him can't kill him, as some form of insecurity, you're not God. That's why we believe in a preemptive strike, right? it save life. You are not God. You want people to love you, not fear you, but these people have everything backwards. By glorifying violence, misogyny and criminal behavior in their lyrics and actions, these individuals are contributing to the erosion of social values. Dancehall with its global reach has an immense 
influence on young and impressionable minds. When artists in the genre normalize crime, they are sending a toxic message that undermines respect for the rule of law and the rights of fellow citizens. So when a guy, you know, like um, the coke dealer, Bujuband, and I sing and I say, tell um, um, youths so, and, and I to women, girl, me serious, me, I forget it tonight. I forget your body by gunpoint. Most people, most women can't even think to know that it's rape. What he's promoting is rape. And that is what Jack Ewer did. Jack Ewer did the same thing. Art imitate life. And rape a woman at gunpoint. And went to prison. But yet you have the same woman them who against rapists but they are supporting a man who promote rapes. So make that make sense to me. To show you how people are backward. So ig ig ignorance at its best. Illiteracy is bliss. Jamaican people, I tell you man, they're going to hell, you know. So um we know that with Fieval Williams at the end of the Ministry of Education, things what, the things that she have in place, things will change turn around. You understand? So worse. So dance all with the global reach has an immense influence on young and impressionable minds. There's no positivity in a dance hall music. Now we have some guy where them tattoo from them head to them toe. Dumb is them, you know. Most of them don't even know that. Eventually, they're going to end up with all kind of sickness. Grave disease, this or that and all kind of thing. Before the tattoo. You have to uh, look, look at a man like the most intelligent and educated. The two most, intel, um, the two most intelligent and educated um, dance hall artists are... Sean Paul and Mr. Vegas. And if you look, just look at both of them. The, mo the two most educated dancehall artists. Sean Paul and Mr. Vegas. Look for Sean Paul. Of all of the artists, them are Sean Paul should have tattooed himself. And you see what he does? He doesn't do that. Because the man they are edu the man they are educated. Because he knows that your skin is the main organ. And once you trouble that, a problem is going to start. But the dumb is them that know that. You, know. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But I tell you that. They don't know that. Education is paramount. So worse yet, this normalization of criminality stems from a deeply ingrained self hate. So when a man promote and romanticize with violating other people's rights, and a man feels a man tough and him bad, not because of self hatred. You don't love yourself. If you love yourself, you're going to love another person. When a man walk and screw up in face, it's because you have issues, you have problems, internal problems. If you love yourself, you have a smile on your face. Why you want people to see you and say you're unhappy? Make that make sense. So instead of lifting up their communities, these individuals project their frustration and insecurities outward, inflicting harm on, on the very people who look up to them. Their arrogance blinds them to the fact that they are not just harming others, but perpetuating a cycle of violence that and seers, and sneers, and sneers generations. To address this, the dancehall community and broader Jamaican society must confront the toxic culture head on. The narrative needs to shift towards one that uplifts, educates, and empowers. And that's what we're all about over here at the Jamaica Young Police. We burn fire upon all, all of these people who, who destroy the people their mind. It started from 1972. And in 1980 to um, from 1980 October to um, February 1989, we were get, getting um, getting it back. And from there, everything has been going down. Now we are at we are at close, we are at the bottom. So we don't know how we are going to try to fix it. But it's, it it starts with the music, education, and the music. You understand? So we we people in the diaspora and those who have influence, we have to start lobby to the other governments them. Um, in the Caribbean, not to let in artists to let them make uh, money from the destruction of our people. Because our black people, our black people, they must sell the destruction, you know. And then our white people, because you know, so the white people got the, the um, dancehall artists, them stage show them, or concert, what them call it. Our black people, the white people, them got the conscious one, the conscious thing, them with the Lucian as them, and but you have to understand too, you know. You have to be a part of the cabal. I'm part of them kiss ass business too. I've even noticed other certain kind of 
so, 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 certain kind of so called Rasta because they have long hair already. Enough of them are not Rasta. Them, so, co them take coke. Some of them are big bow cats. We are, we are uh, release a video and show you one Rasta. Yeah, man. One of my favorite Rasta. And, uh, yeah. and we are show you a woman with him. Yeah, man. Big bow cat. I want to still look up to him. He kill all dog to one of them things. We are giving her a hint. Yeah. So, artists as influential figures have a responsibility to break free from the chain of self hate and criminal glorification. It's time to reject this dangerous normalization and re replace it with a message of hope, respect, and growth for all. Only then can the dancehall industry reclaim its rightful place as a powerful force for positive cultural change. So, David Brooks, better known as Mavada, is far from being a role model for Jamaica, Jamaica's youth. In fact, he embodies the very essence of criminal of a criminal mindset. Someone who uses his influence to glorify a lifestyle of lifestyle rooted in violence, lawlessness, and disregard for others, basic human rights. This is not the kind of example that should be set for the next generation. Mavada's actions, whether through his personal choices or his music have contributed to a toxic culture that normalizes crime and undermines the fabric of society. While he may have used his celebrity status to escape immediate accountability, his evasion of justice is only temporary. The Jamaican police are eagerly awaiting his return, and when he lands on Jamaican, Jamaican side, they will ensure that he faces the consequences of his actions. There comes a point where Every individual must be held accountable for violating the rights of others. When you participate in or encourage anti-social behavior that arms others, whether through direct involvement in criminal activity or through promoting it in the public sphere, justice must be served. Mavada's past is a testament to his disregard for the law and his return will mark the beginning of a long awaited process to hold him responsible. Prison is where he belongs, not just as a consequence of his actions, but as a message to those who idolize him. Violating the human rights of others come with a heavy price. In a society that is battling against the glorification of crime, Mavada's downfall will be remembered. And reminder that no one, regardless of their fame, is above the law. The youth of Jamaica deserve real role models, people who inspire them to rise above crime and strive for a better future, not, involved, not individuals who lead them down a destructive path. Mavada is not a good, decent, ethical, loving, morally inclined, law-abiding father. Because what a, a loving and law-abiding father would never lead his son or child down a part of crime. Such father understand the immense responsibility he carries, not just to his child, but to the society as a whole. He knows that guiding his children towards a life of integrity Respect for others and the respect for law is the ultimate act of love and devotion. Take for example, Vibes Cartel, a figure who, despite his own controversial history, has made it clear that none of his children are, are to get involved in criminality because he doesn't want to see them behind bars. This statement reveals a man who, regardless of his past, understands the complex consequences of a life of crime. He knows that once a person steps into a world of criminality, the outcome are bleak, leading either to prison or worse, the departure lounge. His stance demonstrates the foresight of a father who recognizes the dangers that comes with glorifying such a lifestyle. In contrast, fathers who encourage or allow their children to become entangled in criminal behavior are feeling in one of their most fundamental duties to protect and nurture their offspring. It is not enough to provide material support. A father must also offer moral guidance and instill values 
that will help their children make the right decisions in life. The failure to do so, as we have seen in some cases, result in tragic consequences, not just for the child, but for the family and the community alike. Encouraging a child to begin in a life of criminal behavior it's not only a failure on the father, but it shows that the father is lacking decency. A true father ensure that the child, our children have the tools, knowledge and values to avoid the traps of crime and live fulfilling lives. Those who understand the intricacies of criminality and choose to shield their children from it are the ones who exemplify real fatherhood. They are the ones shaping a brighter future, not just for their children, but for our society. A true father leads by example, guiding, their, guiding his children with love, integrity and moral conviction. David Brooks, a.k.a. Movada, lacks all of them. He lacks like love, integrity and moral conviction. Fathers who encourage their children into a life of crime, as we see with the individual like Mavada, not only feel the parental duty, but also contribute to the broader erosion of societal values. In contrast, even figures like Vibes Cartel, despite their controversial past, can acknowledge the destructive nature of criminality and activity, actively work to prevent their children from falling into that trap. It is the duty of every father to protect their children from harm not lead them towards it. A responsible father understands the serious consequences of criminal behavior and instill in his children the principle of decency, lawfulness and respect for the rights of others. David Movar, David Movar Brooks have none of that. So by doing so, they safeguard their children future and contribute to a more just and peaceful society. Ultimately, Fathers who promote a life of crime are steering their children toward the path of destruction. While those who reject it are fostering hope, stability and growth. The future of our youth depends on the value we impart. And it is time to champion fathers who raise their children with wisdom and compassion. Rather those who lead them astray. Mavada Brooks, yeah man, David Mavada Brooks is the epitome of a worthless father and whenever this man touch Jamaica he will face justice that he has been evaded for such a long time. Have yourself a beautiful Jamaica. Hey look here if you can do good do better man. Time now will stop romanticize with criminality and take back with Ireland from all of these people through the music, the rhetoric because you have to understand you know, when we are killing you know, when you are kill a man or yourself you are kill. A black people are kill black people and we have to stand up for each other. If you don't love yourself, you can't love our next man. Have yourself a beautiful day. Jamaica, Young Police Channel, out.